हे व्यूअर्स आय एम पल्लवी पडलकर बॅक टू यू विथ अ टॉपिक टन एरर्स इन कंटिन्युएशन टू रोल ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग जिओलॉजी ए फॉर टन एल्स इज अर्स अँड डॅम्स सो टन एल्स आर वन ऑफ द एक्सायटिंग फीचर्स ड्रिल्ड थ्रू द माउंटेन्स और हिल्स आर अंडरग्राउंड वेन वी पास थ्रू दिस टन एल वी गेट अ व्हेरी एक्सायटिंग फीलिंग ॲज there is no sunlight no gps working in the tunnel and we are totally in the dark but with lights and ventilators inside okay let us start with tunnels so the tunnels are the underground passages or routes through hills mountains or earth crust used for different purposes such as passages made by excavating rocks below the surface or through the hills or mountains there are six types of tunnels in all the first type of tunnel is transportation tunnel used for transportation across the hills or highlands to lay roads or railway tracks for regular traffic and other transportation purposes second type of tunnel is the traffic tunnel it is used to reduce the distance between places of interest to save time and provide ease third type is the diversion tunnel used for diverting the normal flow of water to keep the dam side dry called as a diversion tunnel fourth one is the pressure tunnel pressure ha huh? also called as hydro power tunnel used to allow water to pass through under force for power generation so these types of tunnels are used generally at dam sites where the hydro power electricity is generated fifth type of tunnel is the discharge tunnel meant for conveying water from one point to another under gravity the sixth one is the public utility tunnel used for public supplies like drinking water cable slaying sewage discharge or oil sup as we are dealing with engineering geology geological considerations for successful tunneling are very much important so first consideration in line is importance of rock the nature of rock types encountered along the tunnel alignment is very important for the safety and stability of the tunnel now there are two types of rocks the first type of rock is the competent rock and the second one is the incompetent rock so when we call competent and incompetent means the rock which can be there in the competition of carrying load and being stable are competent and the ones which are not able to be stable and not able to carry loads are incompetent so when we read the definitions those competent rocks are those which are strong hard and massive which can lead to safe but slow tunneling incompetent rocks are those which are loose or soft or fractured these propose easy tunneling but they will be unstable and hence will require lining so this lining is nothing but the lining which is there inside the tunnel it is covering the rock surface with either steel or concrete structure the next consideration is joint at tunnel site so irregular cracks regular joints are planes of complete separation in rocks which clearly represent the weakness in them so whenever there are cracks or joints in any type of material that material is already deformed one or it has lost its original strength and stability so if such features are present in the rocks those are not going to support the heavy loads of the mountain as well as the vibrations and live loads caused due to the movement of vehicles or any other material and when these are closely spaced joints in all kinds of rocks those are more harmful so in all what we can say is that if joints are there at a tunnel site such a site is not at all suitable for the construction of tunnel the next factor in consideration is faults at tunnel site 
so folds folds joints are nothing but the geological features structural geological features which are very important for construction of the major infrastructure projects okay so folds folds are undesirable at the tunnel site as they pose variety of problems active fault it is the place where there is a scope for further recurrence of faulting accompanied by the physical displacement of litho units litho units means rock units such faults lead to dislocation and discontinuity in the tunnel alignment therefore active faults are undesirable then the third one is inactive faults the places of fracturing intense fracturing which means these zones are of great physical weakness so these locations are also not desirable for construction of tunnels lining of tunnels is carried out to provide a remedial measure to such places these faults are hence the potential zones to create groundwater problem the next geological consideration should be or is folds at the tunnel site after folds it should be folds so folds represent the deformation of rocks under the influence of tectonic forces folded rocks are under considerable strain so in folded regions the tunnel alignment may be parallel or perpendicular or oblique to the axis of folds the tunnel may run along the crests or trough of the or of the limbs of a fold now the next topic to be dealt is effect of tunneling on the ground so when tunneling procedure is to be done the behavior of ground or the effects of ground or the effects of tunneling on the ground that is to be kept in mind or study so due to heavy and repeated blasting during excavation deterioration of the physical ground conditions is the common effect at tunneling site numerous cracks are developed reducing the cohesiveness and compactness of rocks so cohesiveness and compactness are the engineering properties of rocks which are very important for maintaining the strength and stability of the rocks so due to this heavy and repeated blastings the property is lost or it is reduced next is the rocks below the crustal layer are always under great pressure those are always overburdened when tunnel is created the equilibrium of such rocks is disturbed resulting into collapse of roof so when such shocks and vibrations these reach to the roof cracks are developed in that portion because it is already excavated fractured material is already present there so they are bound to collapse frequent bursts may also occur so this phenomenon of fall of rocks in brittle and hard rocks is called as popping due to tunneling the overlying rocks they lose their support from bottom and become unstable such unstable conditions become more precarious if tunneled beds are incompetent or loose or unconsolidated or saturated with groundwater so there are many words here in this line become more precarious means they are more prone to when the tunneled beds are incompetent means those are not at all desired or they have loose and fractured material material is unconsolidated or it is either saturated means the all the pores are containing ground water moving to lining of tunnels here lining refers to the support provided to the tunnel lining may be in the form of steel structures or concrete structures okay the next consideration main purpose of lining is to resist the pressure from the surroundings and to protect the shape of the tunnel it takes care of the weaknesses of the ground it also helps in checking leakages of ground water into the tunnel see how important is this lining 
so thickness of concrete lining depends on the extent of protection required and the degree of weakness of the ground if more the protection is required thickness is more and if degree of weakness of ground is more then also the thickness of lining will be more it also depends on the overbreak phenomenon now what is this overbreak phenomenon that we are going to deal in the next session